gfaith.org. Not .com, .org. gfaith.org. And uh, we, uh, we're glad that uh, the Lord has, uh, has brought forth some good things. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank You for the Word. We thank You that the Word is coming alive in our hearts. We thank You that the Word is rising up and coming forth from our mouths. Holy Spirit, this morning, have Your way. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Oh, I'm excited about this new series. Oh, I tell you what, when we realize who we are and the authority of the believer, then we're going to rise up and we're going to receive all of the covenant, everything that God has for us. We're going to rise up and, and take it. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, let's go down here to verse 19. It says, namely, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to Himself, not imputing uh, or counting the world to uh, their trespasses, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be you reconciled to God. How I many you know that was the, the main focus that we had, we had entered into through Adam, spiritual death? And spiritual death literally... Uh, means separation from the Father. And so Jesus came to reconcile us to the Father. Well, how many know He did that? Come on. He did that. <laughs> it's done. Amen. It's already a finished work. He, I mean, it's done. It was, it was atoned for in the blood. He is the Messiah. He, he did everything that we needed. Glory to God. And so here it says... Verse 21, now this is so important. For He has made Him to be sin for us. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what, when we get a revelation of that, we've got, we've, we've got to get to a point of no sin consciousness. We've got to get to a point where we know that Jesus took your sin. He took your past, present, and future sin. Now I always say, uh, we still ask for forgiveness of our sins. Why? Not for God, for you. How many know that you need to get back into relationship? It's you that stepped out of relationship. It's you that, that, you know, did that. God already looks at you as white as snow. God's already looking at you. You've been reconciled to the Father. You are, you are redeemed. I said you're redeemed of the curse. You're blessed going in. <laughs> you're blessed going out. You're blessed in the city. You're blessed in the... Oh, glory to God. Now, it says, He took the sin, our sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of Christ. Hallelujah. The righteousness of God in Him. So in other words, you are now the righteousness of God. You are righteous. Glory to God. I like that word, righteous. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, there's so many churches that won't preach this. They, oh, man. They say, well, we're, we, don't, we don't have any right. Our, our righteousness is as, as filthy rags, you know. Well, yeah, your, your, your righteousness was as filthy rags. Was, past tense. You are now a child of the king. You are now part of the, the family. Old things have passed away. Old th all things have become new. How many know when you're born again, you're born again? That's deep right there. <laughs> God. You, are, you, you are born again. You are born again. Yeah, I, people say, well, I, I just, you know, I think I'm going in and out of this thing. And I thought, yeah, you can't go in and out of who you are. You are a child of God. If you're born again, you're a child of God. And you have the righteousness of God. Whoo, hallelujah. Righteousness, many times we, we, we get over into that word and we, can't, we don't understand it. It's better to say it this way. You're in right standing. Righteousness means right standing. You're in right standing with God. 
You were not, you were out of fellowship with God. Now you're in right standing with God. There's a difference between righteousness and holiness. Did you hear what I said? There's a difference between righteousness and holiness. Righteousness is what you are. Holiness is what you do. Did you hear me? Holiness, the word holiness just means separated. You get separated from the world. You decide, I'm not going to be living, you know, that way anymore. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm a new creation in Christ. I'm going to get in the Word. Now, how many know if you get in the Word, the Word is seed? How many know the Word, that seed, will develop your character? But if you're not in the Word, and all you are doing is getting in the world, you are putting in corruptible seed. And that's why you keep fussing about things. You keep saying, well, how come I keep doing this? And how come I keep doing that? Well, it's because you keep filling yourself up with the world. And how many know God said, fill yourself up with the word? Amen. Amen. If you get in this book both day and night, you will prosper and have good success. Good success in what? The word. Hallelujah. Oh, I might preach. Glory. You get the Word in you, you're going to be changed. You just keep getting the Word. It's not you doing it. You can't do it on your own. You, you, your flesh doesn't work spiritual things. It's flesh. You've got to get in the Word, which is spiritual and life-giving, and you get that Word in you. The Word will change your life. Hallelujah. God's trying to get the Word in you. He's trying to show you that you, he's trying to show you who you are. Amen. You know what the Word of God is? It's a whole book on who you are. You were made in his image, after his likeness, for dominion, just like Adam. How I many know we got off, off course, but now we're on course. We're going forth. We're rising up. We've been redeemed. We've been reconciled. Amen. You know, we can come boldly before the throne room of grace. Why? Because we've been reconciled to the Father. We can, we can go right up. Matter of fact, we're already seated in heavenly places. Why are we seated in heavenly places? Because we've been reconciled to be there. Hallelujah. That means every day you can get right there. Oh, just, just get underneath the wing of the Most High God. Just, I mean, just, just mm, get in that secret place. Enter into that, the place, and, and, and oh, the glory all around you. Glory be to God. You've been reconciled. You know, when you look at, at the early church, matter of fact, before really the church was formed, uh, those that were in the upper room, now we're, we're celebrating today Pentecost. Uh, Jewish people call it Shavuot. And, uh, you know, I'm Jewish. I was born Jewish. My daddy's Jewish, natural then. And uh, this feast is a, is a wonderful feast. Matter of fact, you're supposed, to, you're supposed to eat dairy on this feast. So we got a cheesecake back there. Glory to God. <laughs> and uh, do you know how Jewish people eat cheesecake today? That's what they're eating all, week, all weekend. Glory to God. They're having cheesecake. <laughs> well, why not? Praise God. I mean, God's good. Amen. So we got a cheesecake. We're being biblical. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> Pentecost. Uh, you look at those disciples in that upper room. They had already been born again. Did you hear what I said? They've all, they were already born again. They, th those, that group, there was, there was uh, the 12, well, there's the 11. Judas wasn't there. 11 apostles. There was uh, their wives. There was the 70. How many of the 70 went forth? They were in there. Uh, and probably the rest of them were women because that's who shows up to a prayer meeting. And, uh, and so the, uh, they're in there, and that, I mean, they are fired up. Uh, you say, well, how, how do you know they were born again? Well, first of all, this is after the resurrection. How many know this is after the cross? How many know this is after when Jesus revealed himself to them and showed him his hands and his feet and revealed, and matter of fact, breathed on them? Come on. Jesus had already worked that work. Matter of fact, there were things. How many know there were people in the Old Testament that got a hold of righteousness? Amen. We'll, we'll get into that a little bit. But they were already in right standing to receive the Holy Spirit. 
How many, how many know that's a good thing? Well, there are two different functions there that we've got to understand. There's a difference between being born of and filled with. Did you hear what I said? Now, you can have the Holy Spirit come upon you, but Acts chapter 1, He comes upon them with power. Being born again, you, you, you're a lamp. Praise God, a light to this world. But when you get filled with, you plug the light in. Come on, glory to God. God's trying to show us that there's more to this thing. He will give you the Holy Spirit. Matter of fact, you're the temple of the Holy Spirit. You're in right standing to have the Holy Spirit now, just as if Adam never sinned. You're walking with the Holy Spirit. You're talking with the Holy Spirit. You are, you are, mm, you're having your being. <laughs> Hallelujah. You're flowing, and, and that flow is flowing out of you like rivers of living water. And you're just walking in it and talking it and blessed in it. Glory to God. Woo! Hallelujah. Every morning waking up. Woo! Now, how many know if you're not waking up that way, you've got too much of the world in you? I, don't, I really don't get out of bed until I preach myself happy. I know people have said, you just like staying in bed. I do, but I, <laughs> I, like, I like, you know, praying. <laughs> I like to set my course. I don't want the day to start where I'm, um, you know, fussing over the, you know, burnt the toast and, and, <laughs> and, and, and you know, all the mess, you know, and the guy cuts me off in traffic and all, you know, and then you finally pray, but it's all, you know, Lord, forgive me. Now, you start your day with prayer, you end your day with prayer, and you pray every time you can. Hallelujah. Well, they were praying in that upper room. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You know, one of the things that we must understand about Pentecost, it, that's the Greek word, Shavuot, Hebrew. Pente, uh, you know, we're, we're talking about 50. Pentecost was jubilee. Pentecost was jubilee. Hallelujah. It, Pentecost literally is all debts forgiven. That's, that's what Jubilee is. All debts forgiven. This had to happen on Pentecost. That the Holy Spirit coming down uh, like a rushing mighty wind. That, that had to take place on the day of Pentecost because that 50 is all debts are forgiven. You are ready for this. And the glory of God comes down, and it just... <laughs> now people are getting saved. I mean, you know, you've got to understand something. Everybody was... This was one of the required feasts. You had to come to Jerusalem. From all these other... I mean, the place is packed. That day, 3,000 came into the church. That's really when the church started, right there. Glory to God. I mean, that, that was, mm, Peter said, I better pastor these people. I mean, the glory of God's coming down. Then 5,000, and then, and then just, just around the world. Why? The Holy Spirit. We've got to allow the Holy Spirit to work here. Now, I know we do, but it, it's time to go to another level. It's time to go to another level. It's time to get into the Spirit where we're, we're in the right place at the right time, and the Holy Spirit speaks through us. Things begin to happen. People begin to change. And the glory of God in the last harvest. How many know that Pentecost is a harvest? It's the grain harvest. Shavuot, it's, it's the grain harvest. It's also when they, they commemorate the, uh, uh, the giving of the Torah, the Word. So isn't that wonderful that it's the Word and harvest? That's what this whole thing's about. And how many know the Word is going to bring forth the last harvest? And how many know the Word is going to bring forth? Then that Holy Spirit who comes down in power, we're going to see signs, wonders, miracles, creative miracles, things that have never been seen. Ooh, glory to God. That the most glorious things are already starting to happen. Creative miracles. I remember I was praying for this one lady who had flat feet from birth. 
Now, some people with flat feet, it doesn't bother them too much, but with her, it was bone on the ground. I mean, it was painful to walk. And, and uh, just prayed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory of God hit her. And she starts screaming. She said, I've got pads on the bottom of my feet. She's jumping up and down. Hallelujah. How I many know that's a creative miracle? Creative miracles have already, you know, it, it's starting. I said, it's starting. There are things that are going on. Glory to God. Whoo, I, somebody don't have an arm is going to come right out. Glory to God. Yeah. Don't have an eye. Just, we, we've heard of great stories like that. Well, you're going to hear it. You're going to hear stories and you're going to see it on a commonplace. It's going to become commonplace. Matter of fact, uh, some of these news, you know, media, some of these different things that they made all their money off of being, you know, woke. Well, they're going to wake up, glory to God. <laughs> and they're going to start to see the glory of God, amen. And, and they're just going to have to film it because everybody's going to want to see it, hallelujah. Oh, the best is yet to come. I said the best is yet to come. You know, one of the things that they did on, on, uh, on uh, Pentecost was Shavuot. They, they proclaim liberty. They proclaim it. They speak it. We're free. I'm here today to tell you you're righteous. You're free. Your sins are forgiven. You, oh, he paid the debt. Go with me now to 1 Peter chapter 3. Get into this. First Peter. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I, I was glad to see uh, Bruno coming in. Glory to God. Hey, you're so blessed, Bruno. Amen. First Peter chapter 3. Go down here, verse 12. First Peter chapter 3, verse 12. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. Isn't that good? The eyes of the Lord are over those that know they're in right standing. <laughs> Hallelujah. And His ears are open to their prayers. They were in the upper room and they were already born again. They were already righteous. They were already in right standing standing because of the blood that was upon the cross 50 days earlier. But more than that, God's ears were open. I want you to know this morning, God's ears are open to your prayers. God's ears are open. You, you never say, well, you know, I don't know if God hears me. Uh, you know, I had a guy come to me one time. He'd come up to the altar and he goes, <laughs> he said, I, I, I don't think God hears me. I don't think God hears my prayers. He said, I, I just believe God doesn't hear me. I said, well, then cuss. He looked at me. He said, what? He said, I couldn't do that. I said, why? God hear you? <laughs> I wasn't advocating him to cuss. Come on, somebody. But I wanted him to realize that God hears us, but not only the righteous, those that are in right standing, he hears us and answers your prayers. It's a done deal. It's already done. It's, it's, it's a finished work. You're not trying to convince God for something. You are believing by faith that it's done. Hallelujah. You come boldly before the throne room of grace. You come before the Father and the Son. Glory to God. Oh, man, and as you stand there before Him, you're just worshiping Him. You're thanking Him for all the things that He's doing. Hallelujah. And you're speaking forth, and, and your faith becomes the substance of spiritual things in heavenly places. Hallelujah. It's time to pray in the harvest. It's time to pray in a, a gully washer. Come on, the former rain, a latter rain, come together. It's time to pray in this last harvest. It's time to pray it every day, not just at church that we would begin to believe it, that we would begin to realize we were born for such a time as this, that we are going forth. My goodness, the whole earth is groaning for the manifestation of the sons and daughters of God, that we would know who we are. We've been reconciled to the Father. We can cry out, Daddy, hallelujah, Abba, Father. Thank you, Lord. It's time for us to rise up, hallelujah, praying for souls, praying for miracles. Turn with me to Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5, and go down here to verse 
10. Called of God, a high priest, Jesus is called a high priest after the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have many things to say and, and hard to be uttered, seeing you are dull of hearing. <laughs> I didn't, things don't change. You know, God, God's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and so is man. Man's still not listening, still dull of hearing. Still not, not hearing. You know, all you got to do is read this book. Quit, quit going according to, you know, your doctrinal, uh, this is what we've always taught in our church. Well, the, is, is it in the Bible? Is it in the Word? Well, no, it's not. It's not in, well, we, th it's doctrine. <laughs> What's that? Doctrine is teaching of the Word. Oh, well, no, it's doctrine of the church. Well, I don't care what your man traditions are. I care what the Word says. Amen? And if the Word doesn't say what your doctrine is, change your doctrine. Hallelujah. So they're dull of hearing. They're dull of hearing today. Now, <laughs> it says, as a dull of hearing, and uh, for when, uh, for the time you ought to be teachers, you, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles or the word of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For every one that uses milk is unskillful in the word of, of what? Unskillful in the word of righteousness. Uh, if, you're, if you're living according to the milk, you're a baby. I mean, there's a lot of baby factories out there. I mean, they, 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 most churches are baby factories. They get, they get saved, you know, somebody gets saved, uh, uh, same guy every week. <laughs> and, and praise God, we need places where people get saved. But how many know once you're saved, if you were saved at five years old, how many know you, you're now supposed to begin to become a disciple of the Word and know who you are? And, and know your right standing. Look what it says. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of this right standing. You're not realizing you're in right standing now. You're still trying to be good enough. I, I was listening to a radio program uh, last night and uh, just turned the channel and the station. And, and so this, this guy called in and he's going on about, you know, uh, you realize the guy's not born again, but thinks he is. You know, uh, he, he's got all these words, but he's never said the sinner's prayer. And he was water baptized when he was a child. And, you know, he hadn't been living for the Lord. Can't understand why. Think. And he, he's got all these things trying to, trying to impress God. Well, I, I, you know, I'm doing this, and I do these good works, and I do these good works, and, I, and I'm trying to do this right. Well, how many know it's not by your righteousness? Did you hear what I said? It's not by your righteousness. It was not your righteousness on the cross. It was Jesus and His righteousness that made you in righteousness, which made you in right standing. Hallelujah. So, back then, today, there's a lot of people that... They're still wanting the milk. They're still fussing over. <laughs> I mean, mm. religious people still don't, don't understand righteousness. They, matter of fact, some of them sing about it. Oh, yeah, they sing about it, but, it, you know, it's just a song. Uh, but we've got to understand the difference between righteousness and holiness. Righteousness is who you are. It's what you got now. Holiness is what you do. You, you, you do the word. Amen. I said Amen. Amen. <laughs> Can I get an amen? <laughs> Turn with me to Romans chapter uh, 3. Glory to God. Romans chapter 3. We've got to have such a good understanding. You, you need a revelation, a rhema word, and understand righteousness. If you don't understand righteousness, you'll always be trying to, to impress God, uh, and, and you'll always feel like you're not good enough. I want you to know you're good by the blood. I said, you're good by the blood. Amen. 
And you're not going to get good enough by trying. You're going to get good enough by submitting to the Word. When you submit to the Word, the Word changes you. The Word is seed. It will always have a harvest. But if you're not planting seed in your heart, it's not going to produce. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So we've got to, we've got to produce it God's way. Everything in the kingdom works by seed time and harvest. It doesn't work by the flesh. It, you can't do it by the flesh. You just can't do it. It's not, it's not a flesh thing. It's a, your spirit now. Amen. Romans chapter uh, 3, verse 19. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. I think sometimes we realize that we are, it's kind of like you have a head knowledge of righteousness, but you need a practical knowledge of it. You need to, you need to know it on Monday. You need to know it when you're in the midst of the world. You're, yeah, we're in the world, but we're not of it. And there are things of the world that, that, that weigh on us, the cares of this world. There's things that, that try to get on you to get you to a point where you feel un righteous you know the blood has made you righteous and you are not unrighteous you may be unholy <laughs> unseparated at the moment well or you may be separated <laughs> but you're righteous you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus you are the righteousness of God Hallelujah. Do you know why it says you might become the righteousness of God in Christ? Same reason you might become saved. It's by faith. Amen. You've got to know it. You've got to know it in your knower. You've got to know you are in right standing. Come on. Amen. So we're, we're getting a hold of this. Now, it says in Romans chapter 3, verse 19. Now, we know that the things, soever the law says... It says to them who are under the law that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified. How many of the word justified, it comes from the same root word as being uh, righteous. Justified, uh, <coughs> literally, when you're justified, you are made righteous. Amen. So it says here, Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. That's what the law did. It gave you the knowledge of sin. But now, everybody say now, the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ to all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. Hallelujah. <coughs> Glory to God. <coughs> so under the law... We had a sin consciousness. But now we're no longer under the law, we're under grace. And under grace, we have right standing. And understanding this, we understand it by faith. You can't get there without faith. You can't get there understanding these things by intellectual. When you, you try to figure out God intellectually, now, you, my goodness, God will reveal things to you that are very intellectual, full of wisdom. <coughs> Excuse me. But if you try to get these things by, you know, just the, you know, well, I, I, I'm, I'm brilliant. <laughs> A lot of people, you know, they, they graduate from something and they think they're brilliant. But how many know that uh, God is the only one who has wisdom and knowledge and revelation that's trying to get it to you? Amen? Hallelujah. So, let, let's go on. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have sinned. You know, if you, if, if you say you have not sinned, you lie. I knew you were getting that. Thank you so much. <coughs> if you say you have no sin, you lie. But how many know Jesus took your sin? 
Amen. So, it says, being justified freely by His grace, not the law, but by a gift. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption, being redeemed of, of the curse, the curse of the law, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be the propitiation, I added an extra syllable, propitiation, through faith in His blood, to declare, what? His righteous, His righteousness, for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God, to declare, I say, at this time His righteousness, that He might be just, just and the justifier of Him which believes in Jesus. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? By, of works? No. But by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified or has this redemption and, and, and uh, uh, is righteous by faith without the deeds of the law. Did you see that? It, it, it's not by your good works, lest any man should boast. It's not by your works. It's by the work of the cross. It's by what Jesus did, not what you do. We're not good, and I want you to hear this. We're not good because we're trying to get to heaven. We're good because we have a new nature. Did you hear what I said? Grace doesn't give you license to sin. God forbid, Romans chapter 6. No, we, we, we are in grace. Praise God for it. But grace is not a license to sin. Grace is simply uh, the empowerment to win. It is the empowerment to rise up and have the favor of God and be in right standing now. Hallelujah. You're in right standing. That doesn't mean you're not going to mess up. Yes, you do. You mess up. But there's blood for that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a covering. How many know atonement means covering? How many know in the, in the Old Testament there was the Day of Atonement? Well, we've got the Day of Atonement on the cross, and that thing is still crying out, Holy, that blood is on the mercy seat in heaven, crying out, Holy, holy, holy over you every day. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. Glory to God. That's why, you know, when, when God sees you, he, he sees Jesus. You're the body of Christ. Matter of fact, that makes you as white as snow. Hallelujah. You're as white as snow. To the Father, you look at, He looks at you and He says, you're as white as snow. He said, I, I, I'm seeing the body of Christ. When I see you, I see you justified. I see you glorified. Romans 8. Uh, he's, trying, he's trying to tell us, my goodness, there's therefore now no condemnation. You're walking in the blessing. You're walking in the grace. You're walking in the, the goodness of God. Hallelujah. You're in right standing again. Hallelujah. You have legal right to be standing boldly before the throne room. Hallelujah. You can cry out, Daddy, glory to God. Oh, man, you are righteous. Hallelujah. You're not trying to get righteous. You are righteous. You're not trying to get righteous. You are righteous. The law showed us sin. The law showed us that we could not overcome it in our own power. But we're not in our own power. The Holy Spirit now has been released from heaven. Now the Holy Spirit was always here, but the mission of the Holy Spirit was released. The Holy Spirit's always been on earth. Glory to God. But the Holy Spirit came down on the day of Pentecost in power to give us power and to give us the tools and the, and the power and the gifts and the, the fruit and all that we needed to be like Adam before the fall. And as we walk in Him, we begin to get in the Word and we begin to get that revelation of who we are and the authority of the believer. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> we're, not, we're not under that law anymore. We've got our righteousness through grace. 
By faith. By faith. Everybody say faith. faith. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. Mm. We're not supposed to have a sin consciousness anymore. You know what that means? We're not thinking about that. We're not thinking about that. We're thinking about God. We're not thinking about all that junk. No, we're in right standing. Yeah, you ever got in good standing with a, you know, a business or something? You're in good standing with, uh, you know, uh, the Bus Better Business Bureau and so forth. I, I, <laughs> Kathleen had joined that with her, or joined, I think, the Chamber of Commerce over here uh, with her business. And I mean, you know, we try to stay in good standing or right standing. And, and uh, well, let me tell you something. You're in the best standing because you're in right standing with God. Hallelujah. Glory. To you're in right standing with God. He's not mad at you. I said he's not mad at you. Well, I did something really, really stupid yesterday. He, you know what? <clears throat> he forgot it as soon as, you know, <laughs> he doesn't let the sun go down with his anger. He tells you to do something. He's not going to tell you to do something that he doesn't do. Matter of fact, he said it this way. My mercies are new every morning. You know what mercy is? You're not getting what you deserve. Every morning, he said, all right, clean sleep. Rise up. You're righteous. Stop thinking about all the sin. Rise up in me. Rise up in my word. Let the word produce now. So you, know what, you know what the enemy wants to do? The enemy wants to get you to a point where you're afraid to get in the word because you're not worthy. He wants you to get to a point where you're, you feel like you're not worthy to do anything for God. How many know that's a lie to keep you from fulfilling your destiny. God wants you to do great things. But if the enemy keeps you down, you'll never rise up. And guess what? We're about to rise up. We're about to tell the devil, you liar. I'm in right standing with God, not because of my works, but because of the blood. Hallelujah. The blood has made me righteous. Glory to God. You're justified. You know, justified, I like that word. I, I look at it this way. Justified or just as if. Adam never sinned. Hallelujah. Justified. Blessed. No longer under any of those things. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. Quit thinking about that food back there. Philippians chapter 3. Hallelujah. We're eating of the word right here. Philippians. And, uh, whoops, where am I going? Philippians uh, chapter Three, go down here to uh, verse 19. No, I'm sorry, 9. <laughs> Philippians chapter 3, verse 9. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Come on, somebody. It's not by your righteousness. Somebody say, praise the Lord. <laughs> you know, some people, uh, uh, someone said the other day, they said, uh, uh, I just praise God for His righteousness because, uh, you know, that's what got me saved. Amen. That's what got me saved because I realized I, I wasn't worthy. But I, I realized He made the way. Amen. But it's by faith. Everybody say faith. It's by faith. It's by faith. You've got to believe you're in right standing. Just because God gives you salvation doesn't mean you're going to walk in it. Just because God has already promised healing doesn't mean you're going to walk in it. You've got to get all these things by faith. You've got to believe that what He has said, He will surely do. Amen. So we, we rise up in the fact that, that He's already done it. We are in right standing. And we're in right standing today. And something good's going to happen this afternoon because we're in right standing for it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Mm, thank you, Lord. Mm, you got to believe it. You got to believe you're in right standing. You have to have faith that you're in right standing for good things. Amen. Your righteousness is by faith, not the law. Your righteousness is by faith. Do you get that? It's by faith, not the law. Throw me to Romans again. Back to, uh, go to ver chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. And uh, go down here, verse 19. 
and being not weak in faith. Now, here's Abraham. Well, Abraham's Old Testament. Yeah, but you're going to understand something. Abraham's before the law. How many know what, what was before the law? Faith. Faith was always there from Adam all the way, I mean, all the way to Moses. Faith has always been what God was trying to get across to us. But Moses, God had to bring in the law through Moses to, to show man his sin and show man that he could not do it without God. And so here, uh, Abraham. Now, I want you to see this very clearly. Romans chapter 4 and uh, verse 19. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead, uh, now dead meaning not being able to you know, have, have, a child, have a child, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. In other words, he's the father of faith. He, he, he had faith, but, be, but was strong in faith. Everybody say strong in faith giving glory to God and being fully persuaded. Oh, I like that. Fully persuaded that what he had promised, what God had promised, he was able also to perform. And therefore it was imputed or made unto him for righteousness. Abraham, through faith, was in right standing with God. That's why all of his descendants became a people that would now be a people of God, or children called the children of God. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. Well, you mean that you could be in right standing in the Old Testament? Yeah. You know what they were doing? They were looking towards the cross. They were looking towards the Messiah. We're just looking back. But everything's by faith. Everybody say faith. faith. Abraham realized that, and Abraham got a hold of that, and Abraham just, just did what God told him to do. He made him, really, he made him Lord without understanding everything. How many know Jesus was here from the beginning? Read John chapter 1. Everything was made by Jesus. Everything was created by Jesus. Jesus is our example of everything. Hallelujah. Jesus was already working within men. I mean, the Holy Spirit was already coming upon man. Amen. Only difference between the Old Testament of the Holy Spirit and the New Testament is the Holy Spirit came in us. Hallelujah. On the day of Pentecost. Glory to God. Overflowing. Woo. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I like that. Amen? Now notice, <clears throat> he, it, 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 he got righteousness. Verse 23, Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him. It wasn't just for Abraham that right standing was given to him. But for us also. Hallelujah. You know, when I get to heaven, I can't wait to talk to Abraham. When I get to heaven, I just can't wait to get in line and talk to Moses. Someone's going to get a revelation of this. They can't wait to get in line to talk to you. They're going to come up to you and they're going to say, what was it like to be a part of those that ushered in Jesus at the final harvest? What was it like to walk in the fullness of what we only saw uh, uh, darkly in the future? Those things that we were pressing towards, what was it like to walk in the fullness? Don't ever take it for granted who you are in Christ Jesus. Don't ever take it for granted. Don't let the enemy keep you feeling unworthy. Rise up and do something great. Rise up and do something great for Jesus. Come on. Don't let the devil steal that from you. Rise up and, and know who you are and realize this is the hour. 
greatest generation that's ever been on planet Earth is been right here in our midst. Hallelujah. Very first miracle Jesus ever did. Six water pots. How many know six vessels of water? The water was there not to drink. It was there to clean your hands. According to Levitical law, when you came into a feast, you would wash your hands and your feet. That's what they were there for. Governor of the feast comes and says, we need more wine. Jesus said, my time has not come yet. But let's do this. <laughs> of course, his mother was pushing him. And uh, he, <laughs> he changes. Now, how many know six water pots? Six is the number of man. How many know you're a vessel? How many know that, represent, that represented man? He changes the water into wine. Wine represents the blood. Hallelujah. But the greatest thing that was said was by the governor. He said, you've saved the best for last. Guess what? It represented man, and he has saved the best for last. Come on, somebody. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. He paid a debt I did not. He paid a debt I could not pay. I, I, he paid a debt he did not pay. Come on, come on. I owed a debt I could not pay. <laughs> he paid a debt I could not pay. He paid a debt he did not owe. I owed a debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. Thank you very much. Didn't know you were going to get a concert today, did you? I'm going to end in Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Go down here to verse 15. You know, people sing that song all the time, don't even realize what they're singing. And if they do realize it, they forget it right after they... <sighs> you have to have a knowing. You have to have a rhema word on it. You've got to know that you know that you know that you are now the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 5. Let's go down to verse 19. No, I'm sorry, 15. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. Everybody say free gift. For if through the offense of one, many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, has abounded to many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift for the judgment, was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is to many offense to justification or righteousness, same, same words, for if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness, the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ, hallelujah. He is the King of kings. You are the kings. Come on, somebody. You will reign in life by one who has paid the price for your righteousness. He has paid the price for your right standing, and now you are kings. Oh, and you are lords. He's the king of kings and lord of lords. You are walking forth. You just got to have, you've got to have good teaching of who you are. When you find out who you are, you start functioning. And when you start functioning, things begin to happen. And God is glorified. Amen. Oh, he's the king. I said he's the king. And he's the king of kings. And we begin to reign in life when we begin to walk in his righteousness. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Right standing before God. Amen. Amen. Remind yourself every morning, I'm in right standing with God today. Amen. God loves me today. I have the righteousness of God. Not my own righteousness, but His. Amen. Glory to God. 
And then just get in that Word and let that Word produce all the things that you want to do. Amen? I said amen. Say this after me. I walk in right standing before God. I've been reconciled to the Father by Jesus Christ. He is my advocate with the Father. I can cry out today, Abba, Daddy, I'm a child of God. I'm a child of the King. Not through the law, but by a gift. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Woo, hallelujah, glory to God. Somebody's been having uh, some pain in their ear. The glory of God is healing that right now. Somebody's had a problem with their leg. <clears throat> God's healing that. Glory to God. Uh, matter of fact, cramps, cramping. God's healing that. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Woo, anybody have a prayer request this morning? And prayer request before we get going here? Hallelujah. Amen. Well, go ahead and serve the people. The communion uh, is first Sunday. We always have the Lord's Supper on the first Sunday.